So if you look at the overall situation, clearly the Bank of Canada is becoming extremely aggressive for a good reason. We have to realize one thing, although inflation is rising 7, 8% on its way to 9%, what we have to emphasize is that at the end of the day, this is not about inflation. The two, three years from now, inflation will be back at 2%. The issue is the cost of bringing inflation back to 2% in terms of higher interest rates. The Bank of Canada, the Fed established their reputation over the past 40 years as inflation fighters. They are not going to toss it away. So although people are panicking about inflation, we have to realize at the end of the day, this is not about inflation. This is about the cost of bringing inflation down to 2%. Therefore, the Bank of Canada has to be aggressive. It's all about inflation expectations and their nightmare is that expectations will go up the way it was in the 70s. If you give the Bank of Canada two options, one is inflation expectations rising, the other is that we are in a recession, they will take recession anytime. Their goal is not preventing recessions. Their goal is to preventing you and me believing that inflation is not under control. We expect the Bank of Canada to move to about 3% overnight rate. This is a significant increase in a very short period of time. The market is pricing in 3.5%. And quite frankly, I believe that the difference between 3% and 3.5% will be the difference between getting it right and overshooting. And overshooting usually leads to a recession. I suggest that there is 40, 45% probability of a recession, and I'm not sugarcoating anything here. That's the way it is. Why? Because inflation is a lagging indicator. Inflation is telling you about the past. If you look at the past uh, four or five recessions, inflation peaked, peaked six months after the beginning of each recession. But show me the central banker that will resist raising interest rate while observing accelerating inflation. In every economic recession over the past uh, 40 years, with the exception of the COVID recession, was helped, if not caused, by a monetary policy error in which central bankers raise interest rates too much. That's more or less where we are. We believe that there is still a chance that the Bank of Canada will get it right. Why? Because of the effectiveness of monetary policy. If we are going to get a recession, it will be a very mild recession, reflecting a few things. One, the labor market is very tight. So although it will get less tight, it's starting from a very good position. We know health wanted signs everywhere. That's good. The consumer is sitting on roughly $300 billion of excess savings. And that's a good thing. And the housing market is under supply. Clearly, the housing market is slowing down. We know why it went up uh, by 50% over the past two years. It was the abnormality of this recession, the asymmetrical nature of this recession, with all jobs being lost. We're low paying jobs. So, home buyers got the benefit of a recession vis a vis extremely low interest rates without the cost of a recession vis a vis a broadly based increase in the unemployment rate. We have never seen anything like that. I suggest that we simply felt that there was a sense of urgency to get into the market and people got into the market and accelerated their purchasing activity. So we borrowed activity from the future and the future has arrived. Namely, interest rates are rising and the level of activity is slowing down and that's extremely healthy. I will not be surprised if you see prices falling by 20, 25, maybe 30% in some pockets. However, it means that people who took mortgages in 2020, 2021, they will be exposed later when they renew their mortgages. And that's the risk that we are facing three, four, five years from now. And the hope is that interest rates by then will be actually lower that will ease that risk. But the most significant decline will be in the low rise segment of the market, detached houses, where we reach a price resistance level, if you wish. And the, the condo market, although will slow down, will actually do better. The rental market, in fact, is going to be inflationary given the fact rent did not rise during the pandemic, starting to rise now. We have a situation in which construction costs rising so quickly, much faster than condo prices. Therefore, they are losing money, so they are not building. Builders, developers, they are canceling projects, they are delaying projects because they cannot make money. So two or three years from now, when we wake up from this slowdown, prices will rise dramatically. Why? Because we are not building now. There will not be supply while demand will still be there. We're still getting 450,000 new immigrants a year, and this number is rising. Turning to the equity market, in my opinion, a lot of bad news already priced in. Maybe some overshooting is also priced in in terms of monetary policy. Therefore, I believe 
that if you look at the stock market now, especially Canada, it is relatively cheap compared to where it will be two or three years from now. If you have a time horizon of five minutes, I cannot help you. But if your time horizon is two to three years, I believe that there are some very good opportunities out there, especially in Canada. 